Hello and welcome to our video where we're going to be talking about the Bing It On Challenge. I'm Chad Hill and I'm joined by Adam Stetzer. Yeah, good morning, Chad. Bing It On. This is interesting. I'm having flashbacks to the 80s and the Pepsi Challenge. You couldn't go to a carnival or festival without running into a little booth where they'd have a little blind taste test. I guess this is a typical tactic for the brand that's trailing behind the number two brand, as was the case in the 80s with Pepsi trying to catch up with Coke. Here we have Bing, a search engine, trying to catch up with Google. We all know Google has become fairly synonymous with search. It is now a verb. The latest Comscore data shows that nearly 70, or sorry, 67% of searches are done through Google, with Microsoft's Bing only pulling in about 18%. That's a very big divide. And over the last year, Bing has really been pushing huge advertising campaign, mega bucks, and most recently this marketing PR stunt with the Bing It On Challenge. Now they're claiming that when they do this challenge, users two to one prefer the Bing results to Google. That has stirred up the controversy. That's the news today. What is the real story here? Well, right. I think the there was a study that Microsoft commissioned, and you know certainly you mentioned the fact that that the power of a brand is huge because we see this very big usage gap between Google's market share and Bing's. But what Bing did is they wanted to basically show that, hey, look, people actually prefer our search results. So the stats I think they came back with were that, um, uh, well, actually their study said that 52% of people preferred Bing over Google, 36% um, preferred Google, and 12% thought they were equal. What happened is um, a, a professor at Yale wanted to challenge that because he thought two things. One, that the sample size that they used was pretty small for such a big public claim. And the second thing is that um, they only, they basically has not made the Bing It On Challenge results public uh, for people to really thoroughly analyze. So they, he conducted there his own study and basically came back with the fact that 53% of participants preferred Google, 41% preferred Bing. So they did sort of over uh, throw the, the initial results, but I still think based on the, the difference, Adam, that we talked about, the difference between the current market share, that the fact that Bing's coming in at 41% versus 53%, it's not as, as big of a, a gap in the actual results and, the, and what people prefer as you might think, right? Right, so actually, so there's kind of a couple stories here. One is the challenge, or the, the challenge that's being brought out, being it on challenge, and the results that they presented of two to one do seem to be debunked. So, you know, they overstated their case or had a bad sample size or whatever happened, and this Yale study is very interesting. But I think the second story is what you're hinting at, which is the uh, when they did an independent study and came back with 53% preferred Google, I see the same stats here as you do, 41% Bing. That's not a, as big a divide as I would have expected from an independent study, non-biased, given the difference in market share. So, wow, that leads to a probably more interesting analysis for our internet marketing viewers here. Then why is the market share so slanted if actually the quality of the product is within, you know, about 10, 12 points of each other from an independent reviewer? Well, I, I think that all comes back to actually it's, it's a lot about marketing and, and the power of a brand. Uh, so Google has the brand. As you said, they've been around the longest, so they have the brand, but they also have some pretty key distribution deals that may change over time, but they have a very strategic partnership with Firefox. They, of course, have the, the most popular uh, browser at this point, um, Chrome, and Chrome has its defaults to Google. So they've, they've done some smart distribution deals over time, but then, of course, just the, the idea that, that the brand and what people, people uh, are, their brand is synonymous with search, so, in fact, we hear a lot of people talking about Googling things. You don't really hear people as much as Balmer might like us, want us to. You don't hear many people saying, let me go bing that. Right, right. And really, power of brand, I guess you, you can't stress that enough. You know, the recent rankings came out, and uh, I think it's Apple on top. Google is now number two in terms of recognizable brand and brand value, uh, beating out Coca-Cola, which has been a long time uh, leader in this space. So yeah, the power of brand, that's, that's uh, crazy strong. Um, Microsoft and Bing still have an uphill battle, but I do think the takeaway story here is, is for me, you know, go Bing. I mean, th this is actually showing that they've done quite a bit of improvement on the results. I know we were encouraging users to try Bing a couple years ago. They've tried a couple other stunts even before they had rebranded. And the consensus seemed to be the quality was, was really much worse in terms of the search results. Here, an independent study showing they're really not all that different. 
and the rest is marketing hype. So it's interesting to watch these dynamics. You know, it reminds me a bit of what's going on in the mobile marketplace with Apple, iOS, and Android too, because clearly the the marketing momentum is behind Apple, but more and more feature to feature, when you do these independent studies, you see Android actually coming out on top in a lot of categories, and you actually now see the market share shifting. I wonder if we'll see the same thing here. Don't know. We'd be really interested in your thoughts. We hope you will subscribe. Let us know what you're seeing. Do you use Bing? Do you like it? We'd like to hear. Thanks so much. Thank you.